Well, well, here we are. I sincerely thought I'd end up being able to put this one off for a while because I, like Warner Brothers, thought the baseline for these things was actually going to be a lot higher than it turned out to be. But yeah, with uh, Justice League now limping to the finish line, it really does feel like the fat lady has sung on the DC Extended Universe, at least as it exists in its current form. And while a year ago I would have told you that I thought it was highly unlikely, yeah, given that they seem to have this potentially massive solo franchise in Wonder Woman, but literally everything else attached to it both sucks and has failed, pretty spectacularly, I mean, just think about this for a minute, this is a five-movie franchise where the best installment was an $800 million box office juggernaut whose release was hailed as a landmark moment in feminist film history, and the second best installment was Man of Steel. <laughs> So it actually feels not entirely impossible that Warner Brothers will actually make that Flashpoint movie and the entire purpose of it will be either to tell audiences that everything but Wonder Woman didn't happen and they're starting over again or that every movie happened but they're all in their own separate thing except when they aren't and don't think too hard about it because we certainly aren't. I mean, if I had to guess, I'd say Aquaman still gets released because they already finished the damn thing. Wonder Woman 2 definitely happens because obviously Shazam is probably far enough along that it still gets made and plus they're keeping the rock on the hook for Black Adam for something, so I don't think most of the other plans survive, at least in their current form. Matt Reeves' Batman movie probably gets made, but 50-50 it's without Ben Affleck, because that dude wants to get the fuck out of this gig yesterday, and even if he does make it, they're not going to mention the other DC characters. I doubt Suicide Squad 2 happens, I don't think Cable does another Superman, I don't think the Todd Phillips, Martin Scorsese, alt-universe Joker origin movie happens, I don't think Cyborg, Green Lantern Corps, Gotham City Sirens, or Whedon's Batgirl movie end up happening, honestly. Now, I could be wrong about that. I kind of hope I am on at least two of them, but that's how it feels. <sighs> so, uh, do you want me to do the thought experiment thing here? Okay, fine, let's do that. Okay, ground rules. Now, since the only movie worth keeping from this disaster took place a hundred years in the past, I'd really rather just pretend we're scrapping everything, recast everybody else, and go forward pretending that the events of the other four or five movies were never a thing. But okay, we'll pretend that I'm also calling the shots on the Flashpoint reboot at this point. So, but first, either way, once the reboot is out of the way, new guiding principle for the whole stupid project would be, under my watch, make one fucking movie at a time. You don't predetermine your big team up as some hugely complicated story that requires multiple films worth of buildup. You either do Justice League first and then use audience reaction to determine who gets their own movie after that, or you follow the example of the guys you're already imitating, make a solid handful of standalone movies that get everyone on board with their respective lead characters, then team them up for a very simple stop the bad person from doing a bad thing story so the entertainment can come from character interactions because that's the entire literal point of an ensemble movie. Now, incidentally, it's too late now, but I do think DC could have just started with a team-up because the roster tends to be characters who either need no introduction and characters who are self-explanatory. Like, everybody knows him, everybody knows him, everybody knows her, runs fast, water stuff, and robot stuff. Opportunity probably passed for that, but still. And then if, if that works and you want a slightly more complex Justice League stories for the sequels, okay, uh, recommendation-wise, I feel like Tower of Babel is a good one. Uh, that's where the villains steal the secret cache of all the League's individual weaknesses and how to exploit them that no one else knew Batman was keeping around just in case. I mean, I imagine the inherent drama there is kind of speaking for itself. I think Justice League versus Evil Alternate Universe League is something fun you could get away with in DC, easier than you could get away with it in Marvel, and uh, what else? Oh, I think Batman or hell, maybe another character like Cyborg or Green Arrow quitting and starting The Outsiders is either a sequel and or a whole other franchise. I, I think Identity Crisis could be a movie. Change every Every major plot detail from Identity Crisis, obviously, but otherwise, yeah, the Justice League trying to solve a locked room murder mystery, superhero clue. Oh, and uh, once you got a Green Lantern on the team, I think Blackest Night could be a Justice League movie, especially if like Chris Pine and Michael Shannon came back as Black Lanterns and you do that thing where the League all briefly got one of the various colored lantern rings for the big Act 3 battle. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Justice League versus Darkseid, etc. Uh, yeah, we'll talk about that. But otherwise, every movie is its own goddamn movie and you keep the content 
continuity connections and the crossover bullshit either shoved off to the bonus scenes at the end or subtle and tangential enough that only the fans who care will notice and regular audiences who don't care won't need to. Remember, by the time Marvel made the first of their solo movies where you kinda sorta had to know a little bit about the various other people to be better off. They'd already made 12 movies before that and it's so saturated global pop culture that there was zero chance anyone coming to see that movie didn't already have a passing familiarity with the other major characters except the one brand new guy. You ain't there yet, DC Extended Universe. You may never be there. So then, Flashpoint. Oh, wait, one more. If this were to happen, one more mandate. This one is the last time you make a whole movie in order to get a plot point over for other movies. Never, ever do that bullshit again, ever. Okay? Okay. Flashpoint. So you remember how Warner Brothers apparently still wants Robert Zemeckis to make this movie? Well, for hypothetical, let's take that and run with it. Flashpoint the comic was dark and apocalyptic time travel consequences movie? Well, fuck that. This would be a chaotic but funny time travel consequence movie, Back to the Future Part 2, but for superheroes. The Flash discovers his powers can be used to travel through time, perhaps from a bad guy with ulterior motives he doesn't know is a bad guy yet, and that he can visit alternate timeline realities. He changes something that he shouldn't have changed. He goes bouncing through all kinds of different eras, realities, and scenarios, trying to change it back, and in the process, ultimately introduces the new clean slate reality where the new rebooted DC Extended Universe will now play out. And did I mention it will be mostly funny? That's important. You're going to be doing a lot of lampshade hanging here anyway. Flash's powers are better suited to slapstick than almost any superhero outside of the mask. You might as well use that asset. Bullet points. One, if you're recasting Flash going forward, you keep Ezra Miller on hand for this one and you make it a team up between the new Flash and the old guy. When we see the new guy's reality, we do not meet the rest of his Justice League, except maybe Wonder Woman, cause same actress, and we don't learn anything major about his reality yet, so there's an actual clean state to slart from afterwards. If you don't recast the Flash and we're keeping Ezra Miller, you do some sci-fi mumbo jumbo bullshit at the end to say that he's going to come back into a new reality but another version of him will continue in the original Batman v Superman timeline. You don't just kill off everyone not named Gal Gadot because that would be a tacky vindictive foot to start off on. Just let Cable and Affleck's characters and the people who like them think that they went off and continued to do their own thing. Just goodwill. Two, the continuity housekeeping bullshit for the benefit of overly pedantic fanboys is a small, small part of this story as possible, mainly coming in at the end as a hand wave for why there will be new actors and a different tone and why a bunch of story fleds aren't going to get paid off anymore. Otherwise, superhero time travel and dimension hopping shenanigans for fun with like pirates and dinosaurs and Woodstock and cowboys and World War II and like maybe Batman's great-great-grandfather, maybe young Jonathan and Martha Kent, maybe use Elseworld stuff like the milestone universe or the gender flip universe to briefly test drive ideas and also just for cheap pops like absolutely do an extended bit with the Arrowverse people definitely do funny bits where actors who would never actually be in one of these movies as a franchise do a one-off take as an alt universe alt timeline version of this or that character like Tom Hanks is the Joker that would be cute and uh you know I know this is very me but if it is me yeah I get estate permissions, pay the royalties, put a whole dedicated effects team on a job of building a 21st century version of that Forrest Gump technology and do one scene just lasting maybe a minute or less where the Flash briefly blinks into a scenario where Christopher and Adam West and Burt Ward and Linda Carter are the Justice League. Maybe use CGI de-aging whatever to imagine which actors from the same relative timeline could have played other members, sure. You don't tell anyone you're gonna do the scene, you don't put it in trailers, you don't do it at the end like, oh wow, these weirdly old-fashioned looking versions of the hero showed up out of nowhere and defeated the bad guy. I know, it's tempting, but it's too much. This would be a short, one-minute breather moment, the precise equivalent of that bit in the first Bill and Ted where they stop over in Rufus's future. Linda Carter is still with us, so you get her to loop a line of dialogue or two where she's like Barry, and then like John Wesley Ship or somebody playing that universe Flash comes out and, and then our guy is all, oh hi, I'm from a uh, different and he's all, I know, son, happens all the time. And then our guy, you know, waves at the league and they all nod and he zaps off and we get one more big wide shot of those guys just chilling in the Hall of Justice or wherever. Just people would go nuts. Like, you'd have to do a long, pointless action beat in the very next scene just to give the audience time to recover from the gigantic round of applause. Like, grown adults will sob. And then, like, five minutes after the first opening night screenings, that lineup shot is a billion people's new social media background. Three. 
But again, speaking of background, this is all still small, brief, backgroundy, just for Easter eggy stuff. The main story is Flash going through time, trying and failing and trying again to make things right with some kind of eventual moral lesson about how you can't dwell on past mistakes and have to move forward and blah, blah, blah. Basically, we're keeping nothing but the goal, the broad concept and title from the Flashpoint comic, because really, fuck continuity housekeeping events, even the good ones. Rebooting a whole universe and alternate realities and time travel are all big, complicated ideas to throw at a mainstream audience to start with, so the plot wherein those ideas are playing out should be simple and straightforward. Even Back to the Future, all three of them, where overcomplication was part of the joke, kept to a very basic, this is the hero, this is what he has to accomplish, these are the stakes if he doesn't set up throughout all three films. So here, something is messing with the time in disastrous ways. The Flash's powers may have set it off and are the key to stopping it, but there's a villain who wants to keep this happening for their own benefit and maybe probably exacerbated it in the first place. At first, Flash's goal is to to put everything back how it was, but then it evolves as his perspective matures and becomes finding order and justice even if they don't shake out how he thinks they're supposed to be, and thus we have conflict, theme, and an adjacent central character arc, and thus a story. The bad guy? It could be anyone, really. I know Reverse Flash and or Professor Zoom turn up in various versions of Flashpoint already, but I kind of feel like the TV show has burned the culture out when it comes to evil speedsters, so, you know, take your pick otherwise. Like, Vandal Savage and Ra's al Ghul are going to be the same relative age across different timelines, so maybe it's one of them. Up to me, honestly, I think someone who's clever and devious but otherwise an ordinary human would be a fun contrast to the Flash, so some version of the Clock King leaning in the direction of Temple Fugit incarnation, maybe? Like if he's the guy who gives the Flash the idea his powers can be used like this and helps him do it, but instead he's using it for his own gain, I, I think that works. Now one weird issue though, it's important that Barry, the Flash, is the only significant constant in an otherwise constantly changing travelogue of weird scenarios, so the audience has a fixed point to focus on, but you do need someone for him to talk to and act like a guide who's in the story but also somewhat out of it. Yes, like Doc Brown is for Marty McFly. I guess maybe Rip Hunter, but like, he's a time traveler too, so why isn't he just fixing things? So, nah, maybe not. Easiest solution? Someone from the future, preferably the older version of a character we already know, who can reach out and communicate with Barry wherever and whenever he goes for some reason and provide a home base point he can be called to in the first place to run his whole mission out of. You know, hey, Flash, I'm from from the future. Some bullshit with time happened and it's your fault and now you've got to help me help you fix it. And this could really be anybody. Older Barry, old Superman, really old Commissioner Gordon, uh, Wonder Woman. She doesn't really get older. She's going to be the only character whose actress sticks around after this, so maybe it's her. You know, just do her hair up different. Maybe give her like a scar to signify that a lot of time has passed. Give her the stupid golden eagle armor from Kingdom Come. That'd work. People would dig that. But let's get real. Warner Brothers is going to want it to be old Batman or rather old Bruce Wayne, which predictable, but I can think of two ways to make it maybe worth doing. A, hire Michael Keaton, pay what he asks. Put some old age makeup on him because he's actually kind of in really good shape for a guy his age in real life. People will love that. He's honestly better suited to the part now than he was in 1989, but otherwise don't overdo it. Don't overdo any of it. Whatever the plot breaks down as, it shouldn't be something that takes more than 90 to 100 minutes to tell. Do not make a slow, drawn out movie about a guy whose entire thing is being fast. B, Michael Keaton is not this old Bruce Wayne. He's this old Bruce Wayne, yeah. And when Barry says goodbye before or after the final battle against whoever and zips off for the last time, we stick around for like 30 extra seconds to establish that Batman Beyond Batman has been hanging around just out of sight the whole damn time. Yes, for one last good pop from the fanboy set, but also if it turns out to be a really big pop, maybe you make that movie. I mean, it's Batman, but also kind of Spider-Man and Iron Man with more sci-fi stuff and presumably played by a young, handsome, rising star. I've heard worse ideas. And it's the possible future, so you don't have to pay any attention to the other movies. Finally, fourth or fifth, what is it now? Whatever. Once this is done, it's done. When Flash Prime or whatever jogs off into the sunrise of what will become his and our new DCEU, that's the end of like 90% of the continuity hangups and legacy shout outs we're tying up or burning off in Flashpoint. From this point on, it's one project at a goddamn time, focused on character building, connective tissue in the background, at least until you've got a handle on this thing and a surplus of audience goodwill. Now, as for what movies they should make after that, and how? Yeah, I, I got thoughts on those too, and against my better judgment, we'll talk about that next time, because this ran crazy long.
Hey gang, here's a question that keeps coming up. If your handle is Movie Bob, where are your movie reviews? Well, my old reviews are in a lot of places. You'll find many of them on my YouTube channel, but you'll find the brand new ones on Geek.com, an awesome site that's also your one-stop news source for science, TV, gaming, technology, nerd culture, the works. You can find all my reviews directly by going to Geek.com slash author slash B. Chapman, because that's my real name, and you can get regular updates on all my reviews and all of Geek.com's other great content by signing up for their kick-ass newsletter at subscribe.geek.com. And don't forget to also subscribe to the Geek.com YouTube channel, where you'll find the videos that accompany my reviews and tons of other great content, too. Remember, that's Geek.com, the Geek.com newsletter, and Geek.com on YouTube. Make sure you don't miss out on all the latest Movie Bob reviews. You can also check out my own new website, Movie Bob Central, where you'll find my blog, links to all my work, and shop for my books, ebooks, and future Movie Bob products. And please remember to like these videos, share them with all of your friends, and subscribe to this channel. Thank you for watching another Movie Bob production.